All right. We had Whole Foods shut down after 13 months. 13 months. We now have a new record holder for least amount of time in a store location near the Tenderloin in San Fran before basically saying, no moss. We're out of here. We're done. Couldn't take it. Seven months. After seven months, Coco Republic announces its San Francisco flagship closure. Just, ah, done. Done. Yeah, this is no good. Guys, it's been a great six month, seven month run. We enjoyed all seven months of our tenure here after spending millions of dollars renovating the former Crate and Barrel in Union Square. You know, we did all that work. We invested in the community. And then, you know what? It's not about the community. It's it's, it's not about, the, it's us. We just, we don't feel like San Francisco and our flagship store here is really the right fit. It's just, it's not a good fit. Therefore, thank you for your loyal seven months of, you know, shopping at our store. We got to go. We got to go. It's been a run and it's been some fun times, but there's also been a tad bit of adversity and we feel like we can't really run our store safely. So we got to go catch us at our other locations though. And online, CocoRepublic.com. See you there. Right? Seven months. The Australian furniture retailer had just recently replaced and renovated the former Crate and Barrel store in St. Union Square. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we've got going on at crazy times. I mean, how many more of these am I going to read? Probably a lot, right? Probably a lot. In October of 2022, after completing a multi-million dollar renovation, Australian furniture and lifestyle retailer Coco Republic opened its flagship San Francisco location at 55 Stockton Street in Union Square. All right, let's take a look at that. I want you to know where it is. I I looked at, I did my due diligence. I looked at it. I brought up this little map. Now we're going to look. All right, so you got the Tenderloin right here. Yeah, yeah, that's the kiss of retail death, right? The Tenderloin. It's just a no-go. No-go. All right, here's Coco Republic. Basically, not even on the outskirts of the Tenderloin, on the outer edges of the Tenderloin. That's what you've got going on here. It's basically in it. And it's not in it to win it because they're going home. Here's Westfield, uh, San Francisco Center. And then you've got the, um, yeah, you've got the Union Center somewhere just right up over here. Up here further north, you've got the Whole Foods. I mean, you have probably 20, 25 big, big stores that have all closed down in this area because of the Tenderloin. The Tenderloin being, if you're not familiar with the Tenderloin, it's an open area uh, drug market in San Francisco. It's kind of that place you go if you want to score some drugs. And unfortunately, those who have addiction issues, they're only going to go so far from that area because that's where the drugs are. So they're going to go to Cocoa Republican Steel. And then it creates this whole thing where they're hanging out on the sidewalks in the area, you know, pooping on the sidewalks, needles, all that. You got crazy people running around. You've got incidences within the stores. You've got safety issues. You got drugs. You got people ODing in the restroom of Whole Foods. This is an ongoing, absolute nightmare when, you know, the U.S. market and the worldwide market is experiencing a retail apocalypse because we realized we could pretty much buy all of our stuff online. We don't have to go into a store anymore. These stores have great return policies. Let's just buy all of our stuff online. You know, I, I would say that for most everything, I mean, everything that I get on Amazon, I don't really care. I don't need to touch it. I don't need to, you know, handle it. But clothes, yeah. Furniture, I, I want to sit on a piece of furniture, right? So there's some stuff that's a no-go for me, as far as buying online, but then there's also that, okay, if it doesn't fit, you just send it back and you order the next size up or the next size down, or you don't order it again. Cause it just, you know, it looks crappy on you. Isn't that funny how you can get a, um, you can get a shirt, same damn shirt, same model, different color. And it just fits wildly different. It's like it came off of the bolt of fabric, you know, at the end versus the middle. And it's just got a different cut. It drives me crazy. It's like, nah, it's the same shirt, but it's not. That one doesn't fit. This one over here does. 
and you got to figure out your closet. You got, you got the shirts you really like over here. And then you got the not so much. And then you got the crappy ones, but you paid a lot of money for the crappy ones. So you want to see them sit in your closet so that you can get credit for that. Well, in Cocoa Republic, Australian, yeah, maybe they didn't do their market research. Where are you putting your store in in San Fran? Ah, just outside of the Tenderloin. I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, what could go wrong there? What could go wrong? Yeah. How did, how did, in their research and development of these stores, how did they come up with the concept of near an open air, a known open air drug center is, is going to be a good thing. It's like, you know what, this is a solid decision. Let's move forward with it. These areas in their, in their defense a long time ago were re I mean, Union, Union Square, Union Center, epic shopping center, epic, San Francisco, epic. You should be able to go to San Francisco and buy stuff all day long because it's one of North America's biggest cities and it's got all that stuff and you got t crazy employment centers. I think the average income in San Fran is like 160 grand. So you got people rolling around just on the median income that can buy damn near anything, right? So this should be perfect location, but it's not. It's near the Tenderloin and it's just getting crapped on. Seven months later, a Cocoa Republic spokesperson told San Francisco Gate that its flagship San Francisco location is set to close in the next few months, citing a familiar reason. Ba, 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 lack of customer foot traffic. Now, we talk about this all the time. Well, I mean, there's just not enough people walking around. Well, it's the... How come there's not enough people walking around? Well, because they're fearing for their lives. Public safety. And you don't have enough cops. And you got people just running around on drugs. You got people that are whacked out of their mind that are literally crazy that should be in institutions. You don't have a housing problem. You got an addiction problem. You got a mental health care problem. And for a lot of these folks, you know, their brains have just been either tweaked by the drugs or tweaked by life. You know, with the, with the death of my son, who was 27, we just had his, um, his memorial service, his life celebration, whatever you want to call it, uh, this past weekend. And I, I have a much greater empathy for people now whose brains snap. They lose hold of reality. Because when you bump up against something like your son dying, you know, my kid wasn't 10. He was 27. I had 27 years with him. I had him when I was 27. I had my older other son when I was 24, who's now 30. Math, right? It's a thing. But I had him for a long time and it's been, it has been really hard on my mental psyche. I mean, it's just like, there are days where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I, so I just got to kind of go to the things that I know how to do and do those rinse, repeat and keep going. But some people just crack or some people turn to the drugs that they're doing. And unfortunately the drugs that they're doing are killing them because it's got fentanyl in them. You know what I mean? And that was part of my son's issue is that he was really sad that he's, you know, wasn't going to be with his girlfriend anymore. And he didn't feel like he had a lot of positive things going on, even though he did. You know, he was, I am fart boy on TikTok. His best video had 1.8 million views. Yeah. He had 13,000 subscribers or something like that. Crazy. He had a lot of good stuff going on, but he just couldn't get past some life stuff. He felt like his other friends were passing him up in the success road of, you know, business or job or whatever. Girlfriend wanted a break and yeah, he did some drugs and one of those drugs put him down for, you know, forever. And so, you know, for my mental health, it takes a massive toll. So I have empathy for those folks, but you also got to know that if you turn to drugs, that may go ultimately south, especially in today where you take one street pill, you know, laced with the, I think they refer to it as the tip of what's on a pencil, you know, two milligrams of fentanyl can kill you. I mean, it's not a lot, right? So you make one bad choice like that, which is what I think happened to my son. And let's be honest, that this wasn't his first time down the street drugs route. I mean, it just wasn't. But in his defense, he felt like since he wasn't smoking fentanyl, it's going to be okay. If you take a Xanax or you take something else just to kind of chill you out, you're going to be okay. Well, that's true until you're not. 
you know, that's, that's, that's what we've learned and experienced. And so for those of us left and for a lot of these folks that are on the street, you know, they're, they've had cracked minds, but when your mind cracks, that's when I believe it's up to governmental entities to kind of step in like they used to do and say, Hey, here's where you need to go to get some help. But we just don't do that anymore. We dumped out all the mental institutions and cranked up all these opioid drugs. And now we're sitting with all this craziness. And it results in a lack of customer foot traffic, which the company pinned in part on unsafe conditions, or at least people's perception of unsafe conditions in the surrounding area. All right, let's attack that for one moment. Even if it is people's perceptions of unsafe conditions, you have store after store after store after store that have said unequivocally, it's safety. You got a bunch of nut jobs running around, hopped up on drugs, breaking into our stores, sleeping outside in front of our store, pooping on the sidewalks, leaving needles, garbage everywhere. There are safety issues. We can no longer work in this environment. And Cocoa Republic made it all of seven months record, record setting in and out San Fran. It's become clear that downtown San Francisco is no longer a viable option for Coco Republic's flagship store. The spokesperson wrote in an email adding, it was a difficult decision and one that was not taken lightly. The recent closings of Whole Foods, Nordstrom, Saks Fifth Avenue and Anthropology show that ours is not an isolated problem in Union Square. And we hope the city will be able to address the issues that are making it so challenging to do business there. So Coco Republic is kind of like that younger sister that gets to point at the older sister. Well, she got to do this. and he, You know, she's, she's basically placing some blame. They did this first. So that it's okay for me to. And he, you know, you've got a situation. Whole Foods left. Nordstrom left. Saks off fifth. And Anthropology left. Therefore, we got to go too. So it's it's not it's not placing blame, but it kind of is. My sister thing was probably a weak analogy, but you know it's that pave the road. I was the older brother, but my younger brother was such a wild man. I mean, he was off the charts wild that he he not only paved the way for me to do whatever I was doing. I got a hall pass for basically damn near anything. Just because, well, you're not doing what your brother's doing. It's like, okay, all righty. Yeah, I'm not. And there's a reason for that because stuff he's doing is mm, tricky, problematic. Yeah. So when you get a younger sibling that's, uh, that kind of goes, uh, goes, goes wild, paves the way for you, right? But all these, this is not, this is not paving the way for stores to close. That's not what it's supposed to be. You've already got the retail apocalypse going, right? You got people that have all left the downtown cores trying to get people back. San Fran can't wrap its head around, can't wrap its hands around the issue. Portland can't either. LA can't either. A lot of major downtown Seattle cannot, cannot, cannot. I was watching a, um, uh, not a TikTok video, but a uh, Instagram video on Seattle looks like (laughs) You should check that out. Seattle looks like shit. That's on Instagram. Got a lot of good stories. And the the real quick little short that was on there was, uh, and I call anything under a minute a short because, you know, I'm long-term content. I'm 30 minutes out there. I'll talk forever. And uh, so it was, it was a video of a dude in downtown Seattle, I, somewhere probably by the Blade, which is where the open air drug market and all the, you know, crazy violence happens. And the commentator was saying, this individual is in downtown Seattle. Do you think we maybe have a homeless crisis or do we have something else going on? And the individual was, remember when people used to do that thing like this, they take acid back in the seventies and they just do this number where they're floating their hands in front of their face and they're just turning their hand and you know, getting that really weird psychedelic kind of thing going. This guy was going all out with his arms. He's just all out clearly high as a kite on something. And it's like, do you think you have a housing problem or is there maybe another tiny small issue going on here that we're not addressing? And it was a great, I I posted it on my story. I reposted it. So if you want to follow me, I'm on Sean Reynolds 68 because that's the year I was born. Don't date me, but that's the year, 1968. 
I think it's a great year. I mean, just about the summer of love, 68, a lot of stuff going on, controversial period. I was born. Yeah. And then I grew up in the 70s. And um, yeah, so yeah, there's that. I think it was a great time to grow up, learned a lot. I have perspective on how to do things correctly. And then moving forward, a lot of the craziness that's going on now, I look at this stuff and go, that is not the way to run your life. That's not the way to run your business. Don't do that. That's going to go sideways. And it's because I, I learned the old school ways of the way things used to be. And they worked. Yeah, not all of them worked great, but they worked. Shoplifting every 10 minutes from the Target in San Francisco isn't going to work. Shoplifting, safety issues, Crate and Barrel, Whole Foods, you name it. Yeah. Let's finish this one out. The property at 55 Stockton Street previously housed a crate and barrel, which closed in March of 2022. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> this is just so it closes, its lease expires, and you know, this Australian outfit comes in. Ah, we'll take a run at it. What could go possibly go wrong? And they're out of there seven minutes. Oh, God, this was not good. Whose idea was this? Who was on the research and development of this location? Good Lord, could you not see that we are in the heart of the tenderloin and things are not well? Cocoa Republic renovated the 53,000 square foot space and officially opened in October and they are closed. They're going to be closed as of May, just months later, months later. Fantastic. Fantastically bad is, is what's happened, right? I mean, this is just, it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy to see this happen from just a logical standpoint. But then you look at the flip side, which is why wouldn't this be happening the way that it is? I mean, this is what happens. And that's why I focus on this because there's no wiggle room on this. Hey, you know what? You're being a little too harsh on those on the left. Well, this is an absolute. You steal from stores, you create safety issues, you have safety issues in stores, they close, period they close. And that's something you can't, you can't argue that. Well, we got the retail apocalypse. Well, how about all the other locations outside of these cities where they're doing well? Portland, REI. REI does great business, just not in downtown Portland. Walmart in Portland, they do great outside. Just not in downtown, not in, not in Portland Incorporated. No more Walmarts. Just, you know, you, you can't say this. Well, you, you know, you got this situation going on. This is why the, these stores are shutting down. It's so wildly obvious. And we are reading podcast after podcast of companies coming right out and saying, hey, you know, all these other stores closed and we're closing for the same reason. Seven months, record setting territory. Are we going to get down to like a store closing within a month? Maybe, probably. If we do, when we do. I'll podcast it right here for you on News for Reasonable People. Thank you for being here today. Love to have you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Hit the like if you like this video. Do all that stuff. Thanks for being here. I will catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.